I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to the promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant to most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution, remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light, now in the time of this immortal life in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life eternal, although him... Th through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. O oh, that thou wouldest render, rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at thy presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, and that the nations might tremble in thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou Comest down the mountain, quaked in thy presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides thee, 
who works for those who wait for him. Thou meetest him in joyful works, righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou vast angry and sinned. In our sins we have been long, a long time, and we shall be saved. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is one that calls upon thy name, that bestirs himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast delivered us under the hand of our inequities. Yet, O Lord, though our Father, we art in the clay, and thou art our potter. We are all work of thy hand, but not exceedingly angry, O Lord, and remember not inequity forever. We'll read uh, Psalm 81 through 7. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Sense forth that you are enthroned upon the cherub. Imagine in Manasseh, stir up your strength, come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O God of hosts, how long will you be angered? Despite the prayers of your people. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The second reading this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Call, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sothenes, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place Call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you. Because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. With thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus said, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And when they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds, and with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven, from the fig tree learn its lesson, as soon as it branches, become tender, and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all these things will take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Of that day or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Wait and watch. Now, these last few weeks, the lessons have been telling about Judgment Day, about the day of the Lord, and how Israel thought it was time that they're going to take away my enemies, and we're going to be happy, and it's going to be wonderful. And the prophet said, it's going to be wonderful, but it's not going to be wonderful, because we will be judged. God is coming and not only is he going to put his judgment on non-believers, on those out of the tribe of Israel, but also on you. And today Jesus says the same thing. The sun will darken. The moon will not shine. The stars fall from heaven. It's going to be a scary day. A day that will be judged on that coming again. Now, Isaiah is talking to the people who've come back from being taken as prisoners, as slaves, and they're back home, and they're waiting for things to happen. And they wait. The temple doesn't magically get restored. And he realizes we're still sinners. Yes, there's a few of us that are staying the course, but yet we're still all sinners. We're not doing what is right in the Lord's eyes. And we're asking him to come down. And he's saying, wait, not yet. 
Not yet. You know my ways, but not yet. Paul's talking to Corinth. They've understood. They've received the word. They're learning. And he tells them, good, you're learning. You've learned. Keep it up. Be supported by Jesus. Don't go off on your own saying, okay, I know the way now. Because you're going to wait. Not yet. Jesus is going to sustain you in that not yet. When is it going to be? Nobody knows. That's what we start celebrating today. Advent. Anticipation. We expect Jesus to come again. We know Jesus is going to come again because he said he was. But not yet. But when? When God the Father says, time. And so this time of the season, it's time to really look at yourself. Am I really ready? Because heaven is coming to earth. This time of the season, we anticipate God coming down and being with his people. Now, are we ready? Are we, we think, oh, you know, well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. But we look at ourselves. We can be as excited about it. It's something exciting. We're going to get to see Jesus someday. He's going to come back here to earth. And we're going to be so happy. It's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be a scary day too. Because have I done everything he's asked me to do? Have I told other people about him? Have I loved my neighbor as myself? And more importantly, I loved, have I loved him with all my heart, soul, and mind? What he asks, we go through the decalogues, and then it's summarized, of course, Jesus. It's been done all through the Bible. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and spirit. And love your neighbor as yourself. Have we done that? Because he's coming. I'm excited about it. but I needed to look at myself too. Have I done that? Have I cared about people? Have I helped the poor, the unfortunate? Last week, did I clothe the naked? Did I feed the poor? Did I visit the sick? Did I help those in prison? A lot of times, if you do what the Lord says, you do those unconsciously. You don't realize that you've learned from the Lord and you're doing it. And that's what He wants. That it is His nature in us to become our nature. Not doing it because it looks good politically. It looks good because, oh, look at me, God, I'm, I'm feeding the poor. Okay, He's not here, go away. No. It's something we do second nature. It's something we need to look at not just during Advent, not just during Lent, but year round. Am I doing what He asks? Because we don't know when He's coming back. All the rumors of war, sickness, plague, pestilence, yeah, that's just about every day. We can hear things about that every single day. So we need to be ready. We need to anticipate and be ready for God. We stay by that door as a watcher, learning, teaching. So that when he opens that door and steps through, we're not really surprised because he said, I will be here when? Now. 
it will be here now. When is now? Only God knows. And he's not telling us. So take this time, especially the next four weeks, to anticipate, to be happy, to be excited, because we're celebrating earth being visited by heaven. Heaven is coming down. And it's something to be excited about in anticipation. But also remember, why is it taking so long? Because he said, wait. Because we're not quite ready, maybe? Because he wants the whole world to know him, to understand him, and love him back. Wait. Yet be ready. Amen. Will you stand and join me in the Nicene Creed? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Gregory, our presiding bishop, Foley, our archbishop, Ryan and Keith, our bishops, Jack, our bishop and remembrances, Stuart, Bill, and David, our priests, and Fanuel, the bishop of northern Malawi, that they may both, by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, the Congress, and the courts, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Open, o, <clears throat> open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works. Their rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. and we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Jim, Bill, Rule, Betty, R.F., Tom, 
Ray, Betty, Chuck, Peggy, Ray, Marty, Bob, Judy, Caleb, Becky, Oren, Emma L, Bing, Zoe, Dale, Cora, Jean, Debbie, John, Vernon, Janelle, John, Phyllis, Michael, Deborah, Paula, Hollis, Brother David Cardona, Johnny, Pat, Sarah, Deacon Vicky, and those whom we name now. And for those seeking the guidance and comfort of the Holy Spirit, the Cardona family, Faith, Hunter, Mackenzie, Treg, Michael, Tyler, Nick, David, John, Michael and Lauren, Layden, Deborah, Lauren, Bill, Brian, Kathy, Robert, Pat, Lexus, Ray and Marty, Lamb's family, Kate, Lori, all COVID sufferers, Micah, Jim, Annette, Peyton, Katie, the Goodall family, Sandy, Father Stuart Smith. And for all missionaries, especially Rachel and Jamie, Kate Firebo, Colleen and Irwin, Don and Kathy Mingo, Father Andrew Powell and Union Gospel Mission, Dr. Glenn Petta and Soma, Reverend John Woodruff, Waylon, Sister Martha, and those whom we name now. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. For those incarcerated in jails and prisons throughout the land, especially Raul, Royce, and Cynthia. And for all our troops deployed in the Middle East and throughout the world, especially Abigail, Russ, Josh, Ernesto, Scott. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who travel that they may be brought home safe. We pray and give thanks for our vestries, for Susan, John, Marty, Mark, Bill, Yvonne, Vince, and for our treasurer, Jim. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the persecuted church throughout the world, especially our Christian brothers and sisters in the Middle East. We pray for reconciliation and unity throughout the body of Christ. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer prayers on behalf of the outreach program of this diocese and this community, especially the Diocese of Northern Malawi and our sister parish, St. Michael's, Christ the Redeemer Parish Church, Cross of Christ Mission Station, Lagrange Familia Orphanage, Brazos Pregnancy Center, Camp Crucis, People Helping People, Anglican Church Women, Good Shepherd's Pantry, Union Gospel Mission of Fort Worth, Daughters of the King, Parish Care Ministry, Sandwich Ministry, Stephen Ministry, Altar Guild. Lord, in thy mercy. We give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Randy Reeves, Jim Randall, and Cora Worley. And we give thanks for those celebrating their wedding anniversaries, especially Johnny and Barbara Price. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants depart this life in thy faith and fear, especially Bob Logan, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, the apostles, prophets, martyrs, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Would you stand, please? The peace of the Lord be always with you.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he is betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these, our creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthy receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant, grant us thy peace. peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in known righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to be back on a fifth Sunday. I'll see you next time, probably January. <laughs> uh, according to this, uh, pretty much a normal week, as normal as normal is now. Uh, of course, we started uh, Advent today. Happy New Year, by the way. It's a church New Year beginning. So, uh, masses, I'm not sure if we're going to have them or not. Uh, I don't think so, because uh, this wonderful time of the year, it's the most wonderful time, it's the busiest time of the year for me, so I will be at work most of the time. If you want me, come up and buy something, and I'll talk to you. No. <laughs> if you want me, just call me. <laughs> uh, I'll be out running around somewhere. Um, next week, of course, I go back. I'm doing two churches now. I don't know whether all y'all know that, Father Smith, I'm Go and do Alvarado, St. Uh, Anthony of Padua at 9 o'clock, and then drink a cup of coffee with them and rush to Hubbard and do uh, St. Alban and Hubbard at 1130. So keep me in your prayers because Sundays are, you know, they say priests only work one day a week. Well, I work about twice as hard, you know, that one day. But uh, keep me in your prayers on that. Uh, we will still have morning prayers if y'all want to come by every morning at 8 o'clock. I'm still here for that. And it's a good way for me to get my day started because when I go into this wonderful time of the year, at, you know, selling retail and everything like that, I need all the help I can get. So I go in and do morning prayers. Uh, do you know of anything that's changed or how accurate this is? Yeah, okay, no masses. Uh, as far as classes, I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay, December 12th, which is also a... Are they still having the quiet day that day? Father Noy is leading Advent quiet day. Okay. Next week, I'm not sure who's going to be here. Do you know who's going to... Oh, okay. Well, it'll be a surprise next week. <laughs> You get two surprises in a row, first of all, the new people, they go, who's that guy? Well, I'm, I'm, you see my name around different places, but I'm Father Bill. Uh, call the church office if you've got something, if you don't know if it's actually going on or not. Call the church office, and <laughs> we're going to basically do it day by day for the next couple of weeks. Uh, other than that, is there any birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. Okay. Would you stand, please? May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and reign with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.